I thought it might be fun to do something slightly different for a video and document the frequency ranges or pitch ranges of some of the different ways that I produce stable oscillators on the mixing board. This might be an interesting reference for other people in their mixing boards or for anyone who just wants to get a better sense of what the potential range of stable tones are on this instrument, the mixing board, as a feedback instrument. I have three different types of channels set up here. I have stable oscillators on the channel inserts. I have oscillators on the auxiliary sends, creating feedback loops. And finally, I have an oscillator that is created by muting a channel and running it back into that same input to create a stable feedback loop on the mute channels using Alt-3. I'm actually going to move the mixing board over a little bit here. There we go. Make room for a tuner that is going to show the pitch and frequency that uh, we're listening to at any point on the mixing board. Now, because of some of the sort of like subtones under what we're hearing, um, it sometimes will lock on to a pitch that is lower than uh, what we're hearing. Um, so just use your ears as we're listening to it. Uh, it's a little janky, but it's the best setup that I think I have at the moment. So without any further ado, let's start with oscillators on the channel inserts. Here it is all the way to the right, the tone pushed down as far as possible around an E flat four. around 300 hertz. Here we are one octave up. You can see the distance here that we've taken to get up one octave. And you'll notice that this is an exponential curve. So we took a very long time to get up one octave here. And we have a bit of a way to go still before we run out of tone. Here's up one more octave. And here's up one more octave. You can see as we get to the edge here, our tone starts to drift. It's much less stable at these edges. And on this type of channel, an E7 around 2600 hertz is the highest tone that I can consistently get. After that, we lose oscillation. I'm going to take this back to around 440 though. Which is in the middle of our range here. And I'm going to leave this here and we're going to come back to this um, when I'm done recording and see uh, what our drift is like at the middle point, because I think these oscillators are fairly stable except at their edges. Now the aux ends. These have much more variability. Um, so I'm going to sweep them from a couple of different points so that we can see. I have two aux ends set up, one on the preamp channels here and one on the stereo channel that just has a boost instead of the preamp. So.
So we can push these quite high. And of course, with the insert channels, the feedback is happening before the EQ. So the EQ does not really affect the tone here. But with the aux sends, this happened, the feedback happens after the EQ. And so these become uh, pitch and range shaping as much as they become timbre shaping tools. And for this reason, I actually think that I generally like for stable tones using the channel without the preamp more for aux sends um, because it, the preamp just adds one too many extra variables for configuration. So now I'm going to sweep the aux 2, which is a post uh, fader send. So we can't get a stable tone here um, that is independent from the volume that we're listening to, but we can get some good sweeps here and stay on tones. And so I'll show you that. It's hard to specify an exact range because of the different controls that you get here, but hopefully some of these sweeps are useful for understanding the potential range. The EQ does what you might expect it to do, where boosting highs, cutting lows gives you a higher range, increasing the lows. Gives you a lower range to work through. The level boost here just sort of amplifies everything more. And takes you into a lower range there. Finally, I want to demonstrate the mute channels uh, here, which we're using channel 11 as a feedback loop and we're listening to it with channel 13 as a separate volume control. The range that you get on the fader actually gives you something that's much more narrow in range than what you get on either of the aux sends. And so this makes this actually a little more performable uh, for selecting pitches and moving between them. taking this as high as we can go. We can get up into the 8K, 9K range, same as we can with the auxiliary send oscillators. And hopefully that gives you a bit of a demonstration of the potential range for this type of oscillator as well. Coming back to our channel one, we've maybe dropped the scent, um, which overall is fairly stable. So I would always have a tuner handy if I was trying to get specific pitches on this thing for any long period of time. But at the center of the range on these channel inserts, you can get a fairly stable tone that lasts uh, for a period of time. With the low cut disengaged on the aux1 channels here, they are much lower in range, quickly going into the sub-audio range. But I can show you what that sounds like here. You can see up here it's much less stable. Similar to when we were at the top end of our upper range, we get a bit of drift on the edge of oscillation here. Unfortunately, we quickly enter sub-audio territory, and for stable bass tones, there's not a lot that we can get. With 
the channel inserts. That is a job better left to the aux1 or mute feedback loops. Hopefully this was helpful. I've been thinking about this video for a while and just getting some data out there, even if it's a little bit rough, to show the frequency ranges on some of these different types of oscillators that you can make on this thing. Uh, let me know if this was useful, if there's any other technical information about the mixing board that you would like to see. I think I'll probably do another video following up to this one with the 1202, or at the very least, I'll, I'll let you know if it's different. So yeah, hopefully this was useful, and thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day.